Hello and welcome to our documentary project. I'm Ahmed al Matrafi, my partner is Abdurrahman Shazad for this project. The Earth is divided into five main spheres, which are the geosphere, hydrosphere, atmosphere, cryosphere, and biosphere. This project will be focused on cryosphere and biosphere. We will be clarifying what these spheres are and the interactions with the water and carbon cycles. We will talk about the connections between our spheres and sea level rising, as well as global temperature rise will be referred to during this documentary, and how human activity is modifying and infecting these spheres with their interactions. The cryosphere is a frozen water part of the Earth's system. The cryosphere includes the polar ice caps, continental ice sheets, mountain glaciers, sea ice, snow cover, lake and river ice, as well as permafrost. One of the biggest examples of cryosphere is the Antarctic continent. The cryosphere influences our world's climate. One of the ways it's affected the climate is by reflecting the heat of the sun because its bright surface is able to reflect up to 80% of the sunlight. And now I'll be talking about the other sphere, which is biosphere. Biosphere consists of all living organisms. This means that all parts of the Earth that support life is the biosphere. So biosphere measures about... 20 kilometers from top to bottom, as it extends around 8 kilometers between sea level and 10 kilometers above sea level, from the depth of the oceans to the skies. Because of this biosphere overlaps and intersects with all other spheres, as life is present in water, on earth, and in the air. The cryosphere and biosphere both interact with the water cycle as they are closely connected to the process of evaporation, condensation, and precipitation. The water cycle is the process in which water atoms recycle over and over again through different states changing from solid, liquid, and gas. As water within the cryosphere evaporates, dissipating into the air along with other gases in the atmosphere. This leads to precipitation, rain, and this runoff water is the prosecure to creating new cryospheric masses. This means that the water cycle plays an important role in the expansion of the cryosphere. The water cycle interacts with the biosphere because the water cycle is a crucial component of the biosphere as rain is necessary for life to flourish in many parts of the world. As most of the biosphere depends on water, for processes such as photosynthesis and to prevent dehydration, this makes the water cycles. The water cycle also interacts with the biosphere as living organisms and plants play a crucial part to evaporate water and help the water cycle repeat forever. The water cycle connects to the cryosphere and biosphere as the living organisms that live on the cryospheric masses depend on the water cycle to for the organism's survival. An example of this is how polar bears being a part of the biosphere and living on the cryospheric masses such as Antarctica depend on the water cycle to keep the cryospheric masses from disappearing as it is their habitat. So the water cycle connects to the biosphere and the cryosphere as it is a crucial component to keep both of the spheres from disappearing. Another cycle that interacts with both cryosphere and the biosphere and connects them is the carbon cycle. The carbon cycle is the circulation of the carbon in the Earth's environment, as carbon can be found trapped in the atmosphere, creating the greenhouse effect. This effect traps heat and an imbalance of atmospheric gases can trap too much heat, therefore causing the adverse impact of the cryosphere through the unnecessary magnification of heat. To understand what the greenhouse effect is, I'm going to use this interactive model. As shown in the model, the greenhouse effect starts from the sun as a sun radiation that reaches our atmosphere. Some of it is absorbed by the Earth and the rest is reflected back. As the heat enters the Earth's atmosphere, it is absorbed by the greenhouse gases. The greenhouse gases are generally made up of carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide. The effects of this is sometimes intensified by human activities such as burning fossil fuels. This affects the cryosphere by putting its existence in peril and causing floods due to the axis melting of polar ice caps. This affects the biosphere as it also harms the living organisms by destroying their habitats. Carbon is also prevalent with the biosphere as it is pivotal in the process of photosynthesis and it is also pivotal in the human life and process of respiration. It allows plants, animals, humans and life in general to exist. An example of this is how the habitats of polar bears are lost as the cryosphere is melting due to the greenhouse effect causing the loss of biodiversity in the biosphere if the polar bears die due to the loss of habitat. Global temperature rise directly connects the cryosphere and biosphere as it affects the cryosphere because global temperature rise leads to the melting of polar ice caps and glaciers. This melting threatens the very nature of the cryosphere existence, which in turn harms the biosphere as too much temperature rise will have a lack of habitats for organisms living on the cryospheric masses or on land, 
which will end up killing many organisms. This rise in temperature connects both spheres as it harms both of them by destroying and weakening them. Human activity is modifying these activities as it influences the cryosphere through the emission of CO2 into the atmosphere from burning fossil fuels and factories. This causes global warming and destroys the cryosphere, harming its existence. It also impacts the biosphere because the organisms end up losing habitat from the global temperature rise. A graph that shows how human activity is causing global temperature rise is shown here. As you can see, in 1890, the global temperature rise was near negative 0.5. And when you compare that to around 2015, the global temperature rise was 0.5, showing us a global temperature change of 1 degree over the years. The red line also represents a trend line, which has a positive slope, showing us how the global temperature is rising. Human activities such as burning fossil fuels and releasing carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, if these activities are not stopped and continued, then because of the global temperature rise, we will lose most of our cryosphere, which leads to the excess water causing floods and harming the biosphere. In this interview with Barack Obama and Leonardo DiCaprio, they talk about the effects of global warming and why we should take action into stopping it. People do not. What makes you terrified for right. the future? Uh, a huge portion of the world's population lives near oceans. Mm -hmm. If they start moving, then you start seeing uh, scarce resources, the subject to competition between populations. Mm -hmm. This is the reason why the Pentagon has said this is a national security issue. This isn't just an environmental issue. Mm -hmm. This is a national security issue. You know, in addition, to just the sadness that I would feel if my kids can never see a glacier the way I saw when I went up to Alaska. You know, that's the romantic side of me. That's the side that takes a walk with my daughters and I want to be able for them to see, or my grandkids, I want them to see the same things I saw as I was growing up. Even if you were unsentimental about that, in very hard-headed terms, you've got to worry about the national security implications of this and the capacity for the existing world order as we understand it to survive the kinds of strains that the scientists are predicting without action. This is why we have to take action now. Another interaction is sea level rising, which is caused by the melting of the cryosphere, which means that it is again harming the cryosphere. This means that because of the sea levels rising, the amount of land is reduced, caused by overflowing water causing floods. So sea level rising negatively impacts the cryosphere and harming the biosphere as it reduces land and habitat for many organisms. This graph proves that sea level is rising. As you can see, in 1993, the sea level was at zero centimeters. And since then, the mean sea level has rose seven centimeters in 2015. This shows us how the mean sea level is constantly rising as portrayed by the trend line with a positive slope.